Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. Uh, every night between Monday uh, and Friday on 6 o'clock, I get to bring you interesting uh, interviews with some uh, fascinating people. Um, I just got an email from uh, an old friend of mine, someone I used to work with, who told me that his movie has got uh, the number one ranking this week on uh, Netflix. And so uh, I had to reach out to him and find out a little bit about this movie and about what's happening. So I want to introduce you to Ken Cancellera, who has an incredibly illustrious career, who used to be uh, the executive chairman of one of Canada's largest law firms. Uh, uh, he was a general counsel of a fairly sizable pharmaceutical company. He's been a partner in numerous different law firms. And then he became an incredible author uh, and has written a couple of books, uh, one of which I've had uh, the privilege of reading. I think there was a sequel he never gave me a copy of, so I'm gonna have to get mad at him. Uh, and then he uh, um, was part of the production of a, of a movie. And Paula Bracati, who uh, is one of the producers of the movie, one of the stars of the movie, uh, and she's got quite a, a career behind her. Uh, she, uh, you may know her from Netflix's uh, Slasher, uh, as well as Degrassi, um, and, uh, and she is one of the stars of this film, as well as one of the producers of this film. So Ken and Paula, welcome to my show. How are you? Pleasure being here. Thank you. Thanks for well, having us, Brian. My uh, pleasure. Brian, I wanted, I wanted to make a, a slight correction, not number one in Netflix, but the number one Canadian movie on iTunes and, uh, and uh, uh, Apple. Canadian iTunes, that's what it was. I apologize. Thank right. you for that uh, correction. I apologize. But number one on Netflix will come soon, right? <laughs> well, we're not sure whether we want Netflix now. <laughs> You'll stay with iTunes. Okay. So, so maybe, uh, Ken, tell me a little bit about what the movie's <laughs> all about. Could you? Sure. The movie is uh, essentially a... a a romanticized version of of uh, of my life. Um, a lawyer uh, somehow becomes successful, uh, leaves the practice of law, goes to a, a major company, and promises uh, the CEO of that company that he will take it in the right direction. That is, uh, with for full morality and ethics, which is what the previous CEO uh, had wanted from uh, from Mark. He accepts that role, um, and after a while, he concludes that it's impossible for him to continue in that environment, and so he leaves. And he leaves uh, for uh, where it all started, in a small village in Italy, in the southern Apennines, where he hopes to reconnect with his roots, with his infancy, remembering the story of, uh, of his grandfather and what he had told him. Uh, he uh, uh, he uh, uh, takes on uh, an abandoned vineyard which uh, his grandfather had left him and uh, tries to make it successful not only for himself but for the, the town of Acerenza, the, my hometown which, uh, which is in southern Italy. So that's the storyline and, and both the book and the movie sort of take that theme line and, and progress it as inevitably you have to in, uh, in motion pictures. Paula, tell me a little bit about your uh, role. Yeah, I play um, I play Laura Lauda Gentile, who is Marco's daughter, and they've been estranged for some time. But when she and um, her mother, played by the great Wendy Curzon, find out that he's taken you know the retirement savings and spent it on reviving this vineyard, they head to Italy to try and see what's going on and get him back. Um, and in that process, you know, she she comes to discover her family's roots in turn by going there. And I think really starts to understand why her dad feels compelled to stay there. Um, and they really, through the course of the film, you know, hold a hold a mirror to each other and they find that they're much more similar than dissimilar. So I think it's really nice to explore a, a parental child relationship that wasn't at the typical coming of age, you know, high school or college years. Um, it was nice to sort of see a, a young woman in her late twenties coming into her own and figuring out what that parental relationship looks like going into your thirties. So, so certainly a treat to get to play opposite Joey and Wendy. And what's the appeal of the movie? Why are you number one on, uh, on Apple iTunes in Canada? Well, I'm sure Ken, you can speak to this as well, but I think, you know, we always saw this film as a, as a bit of escapism for people and something that was a co-viewing experience that you could watch with your entire family. Um, I don't think any of us in, on the planet could have predicted the pandemic that's going on right now that's taken so many lives. It's been so, it's been such a, a you know, a strange time in the world, but um, through all the unrest, I think the film sort of has, hopefully, has been a bit of a bomb, a soothing bomb right now when people can't 
leave their homes. It's a bit of a bit of vacation from your couch. Um, and I think the core themes of you know recalibrating your roots with your family and, and returning to them when you're in a moral crisis, I think, is really timeless. And I think the fact that it's you know sitting among these top ten films on iTunes that are that are uh, not Canadian, but seeing sort of the scope of those films and being among them certainly speaks to how those themes are universal. Um, so if people want to download this, Paula, how do they do that exactly? They go to iTunes? We have, yeah, there's quite a few options. You know, iTunes, Apple TV, Kajeko, um, Cineplex, you can rent it, Rogers On Demand, Bell. Um, I think that's that's most of them. Have I missed any major ones, Ken? Those are well, the, I think that's it. I those think that's the big it. And Ken, if people want to buy the book, how do they do that? Well, they can, they can go to my website or uh, they can go to uh, uh, any of the large bookstores and, and, uh, and do it that way. It's, and it's, what's the book called? It's called Finding Marco. Marco the, is, is the name of the protagonist, Marco Gentile, in the movie as well. And the name of the movie is the same? No, the, 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 uh, the name of the movie is From the Vine. That From is the Vine? Book. From on iTunes also- or Finding Marco in your local bookstore. We're chatting with Ken Cancellara, the author of the book, and uh, Paula Bracati, one of the producers and stars of the movie. We're going to take a break for some messages and come right back in just a minute. Stay with us. Welcome back. We're chatting with Paula Bracati and Ken Cancellara. Paula is uh, one of the stars of a film. Um, uh, called From the Vine that is available on uh, iTunes and uh, a whole bunch of other uh, medium and is number one in Apple uh, TV this week, uh, Canadian Apple TV this week. Um, and uh, one of the other producers of the the film and uh, author of the book, uh, Finding Marco, Ken Cancellara. Um, Ken, tell us a little bit about the story, if you could. The um, My hometown is Echerenza, which is a small a small village on top of a mountain, 3,000 feet from sea level. And it's, it's really one of the most beautiful towns you can imagine. It was, it was voted for the fourth consecutive year as one of the most beautiful towns in Italy. So if you can just picture this, 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 this town, uh, literally on top of a, of a mountain overlooking valleys. And um, up from the town towards the, the river Bradano, which flows meanders at the bottom of the valley, are vineyards, including my vineyard, uh, where the movie was actually shot. Um, And so uh, Marco, uh, the protagonist, goes to Acerenza to remember his infancy. And he does that through uh, connecting with his friends, remembering the stories that his grandfather had told him, and basically immersing himself in a uh, a reality that had long since left him. while there, he decides that he wants to uh, uh, progress uh, from uh, uh, the reason why he left his company in the first place, that is ethics and morality and generosity. So that's what he does. He takes his old uh, abandoned vineyard, he brings it to life, uh, intending both for his personal uh, ethics and for the generosity that he wanted to demonstrate to the town folk in Echerenza. He revives this vineyard and uh, you'll need to see the movie to see how it ends. Excellent. Paula, um, what's the appeal? Of, of you know, of, of me being a part of the movie, you mean, or, or for people of, of to the, watch it? Of the, of the movie, like, is it, is, a, well, is it a good story? Is it a love story? Is it a I, yeah. story of well, redemption? What is it? Yeah, I think it's it's got a lot of heart, and I think it's something that, um, I think it's sort of a, a finding yourself film. Um, you know, we find Marco. So it's and a he, eat, love, eat, love, pray for Ken Cancellara? Well, I mean, I'd love to to see the eat, pr- eat pray, love Ken, Ken Cancellara film as well. Um, yeah, there's a, it's Joey Pants instead of Julia Roberts, you know? And, uh, and it, it, it's, there's a real discovery. I think, like, we see Marco at such a at such a moral crisis point when he starts the film, and he's so rejuvenated through the course of, you know, um, reconnecting with his former friends and and the vineyard that he's left behind, and I I think that's so relatable. I don't I think that sort of knows no age, you know, as well. And um, as somebody who was raised, you know, by her nonni, I can completely relate to feeling so. And I know Ken, you can relate too, like feeling this incredible tie to where they're from. Um, and I I think the film is so universal and doing so well because 
Um, my friend Lainey Gossip talks about this on her site a lot. There's such specificity um, in specificity so universal, you know. And so films Sorry, like what do you mean specificity is universal? I don't understand. Well, sharing that. sharing this specific story of an Italian Canadian, you know, um, experience and sort of feeling like your roots are from elsewhere, I think is is very connecting. And I think there's a reason that films like Crazy Rich Asians and The Farewell, which is a film that I loved so much by Lulu Wang. Um, I think they they show people's families and cultures um, in earnest, and you don't have to be from from that particular uh, background to feel connected to it. So I hope that our film um, feels distinctly Canadian in that way. It's really exploring themes that felt specific to me as someone who grew up, you know, speaking Italian as my first language and not really understanding why I felt so tied to that land until I started visiting it. And I learned a lot about myself and traveling back and about my family in turn. So Marco doing that at his age in the storyline, I think is really moving for people. I think it's really, we see this like childlike wonder come out in him and his performance and in, in the way the story is written with the um, magic realism elements, you know, I think we see this wonder sparked in him through this newfound passion. And um, yeah, I think that's, I think that's why it is connecting with audiences because it's relatable. Is it a Canadian uh, cast or Italian cast or combination? Well, it's uh, those, oh, sorry, Ken, I was going to say both and, and American. With tell Joe. me about the, Paula, tell me about some of the cast if you could. Yeah. Um, well, we have Joe leading it, of course. Um, having Ralph Zaffaretto in, in Accenza was so surreal for me as a Sopranos fan. And we have the great Wendy Crusin, who's a dear friend who came on board, and Tony Napo and Marco Leonardi, who's an Italian legend. You know, um, Kevin Hanchard, who had been such a fan of before. We had, you know, actors that we'd either worked with and really admired or people we were fans of. We got to go out to them and everyone said yes right away and um and the crew as well we got to really see this beautiful marriage between canada and italy and we got to see everyone you know working together in this really in this really special way um and the people of accerenza are another character and many of them are cast in the film our, our beautiful children in the film are the daughter and son of the restaurant owner nicola and patrizia who who catered for us so you see the people of Echidens are part of the fabric of, of the film as well. And um, you know, so many of our background are the locals there. And uh, it, was, it really was a, a co-production in every, in every sense of the word. This will clearly connect with uh, Italian Canadians, uh, uh, Canadians that have either come from Italy or have family in Italy. Do you think it'll also connect with other people that have come from nationalities elsewhere? Well, I, I've certainly been told, uh, Brian, that uh, uh, when the book came out, uh, that, that this should be made into a movie precisely for that reason, that there's a lot of, especially in Toronto and in Canada, which is, a, uh, which is really a, 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 an inclusive society, if you will. Um, it, uh, we all have the same story. Uh, those of us who were born elsewhere or are second and third generations from parents who were born elsewhere. So whether you're from Italy or from Ecuador or, or France or Spain or any other country, the storyline is essentially the same. Your parents or you are looking for a better life. You come to a, a country that adopts you, you adopt it, uh, but you never forget your roots. Um, and so that's what this story is. It's a story, it's a little bit of story of all of us in Canada. And uh, I think that's the reason it, it's getting a lot of traction. What was it about going back to the vineyard that uh, had this impact on uh, Marco? Well, it's the uh, it's where he was born. It's it's all his memories that the cauldron of his memories are in that vineyard called Alvanello. And Brian, it's it's not just the vineyard. It's the fact that it was my vineyard. That as we were filming, I could actually remember uh, walking or running with my dog. In those days, I was six and a half years old at the time. Uh, running through the same vineyards that now Pantoliano and Brancati and, and the rest of our of our crew and cast were, were working out of. I but you're, you're saying, you were saying that Marco had this ethical challenge uh, in his occupation in Canada, and he, he did what? He, he came to some realization in the vineyard? What, what happens in the vineyard? Yeah, he, uh, he, he, he does just that. He, 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 leaves, uh, he leaves his company, uh, he leaves his country, Canada, he goes back to find his roots, uh, not knowing whether he'd ever come back. And that's what the book talks about. He doesn't know whether he's going to stay or come back. 
But as he's there, uh, an incredible metamorphosis begins in his character. He starts recollecting his youth and his youth takes over. And as he does that, uh, he recalls the reason he left Canada for ethical issues. And so now he asks himself, what can I do first to rehabilitate my soul and secondly, to see if I can help the people of my hometown. And really, when you really come down to it, the basic, that is really the storyline. And, and that's what happens. He takes on a vineyard that had been totally abandoned, uh, that had been given to him by his grandfather. Uh, and through hard work and through creativity and through generosity, he makes it work. And uh, in the end, uh, he, he does make it work. And, 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 uh, and so he fulfills the very reason why he left to get there in the first place. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it was a very, very uh, emotional journey for me personally, not only writing the book and then seeing the thing on screen, but actually seeing it there, the very place where uh, I recall my grandfather telling me all these stories about, you have to be generous. You have to, you know, uh, whatever you do, don't do anything wrong. I wanted to mention one brief item, Brian, that you may find interesting. It really captures the whole theme of generosity, which takes over in the movie. Um, when I, obviously, as a, as, a, as a small lad of five, six years of age, I recall distinctly that we had fig trees and we had apricot trees and we had cherry trees in our, in our vineyard, like in our, in our farm. My grandfather would, would, um, would, would take these fruits, take them to our town, Acerenza, and put them in um, pails. And he would leave those pails on the stairs, the steps of our, of, our, of our home. And he left them there for whoever wanted them and needed them. There's nothing said. Nothing done. He'd leave those pails on the steps. People would come over, pick what they want or need it, and walk away. And similarly, if we needed something, you'd go and do the same thing with others. So this feeling of pure generosity, where you're doing something, not expecting anything in return, is a central theme in both the book and, and the movie. And I think it came out wonderfully well in the movie as well. You know, just to, for a second, uh, insert some politics in this, uh, Ken, I'm, I'm really surprised at how many people are refusing to wear masks uh, in this COVID-19. And, uh, and, and it's been explained too many times as if the mask was helping you not get sick, everyone will wear it. But when it's proven that it helps other people not get sick from you, people aren't generous. They don't have a spirit of generosity. They don't have a spirit of community. What's gone wrong? Well, I've, I've had that debate, of course, with, uh, with a number of people, and it's a topic of discussion with, uh, with my family here at home. Um, it's the opposite of generosity. It's arrogance and selfishness. Um, I don't understand it. And, and what bothers me more, Brian, is that they couch that in terms of freedom. Nobody can tell me what to do because I'm the boss of me. Just because there isn't a law that governs that, like a pure law, you may have a bylaw, which means nothing. But just because you don't have a law, it doesn't mean that you don't follow things that make sense, not only for yourself, but the society in which you live. I, I think you need to be of a certain age before you understand that concept. Or you've got to have gone back to your vineyard before you remember generosity, I guess. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think if you're 18 years old and, and, and you want to party on a Thursday night with your friends, I think you tend to forget that. They're not malicious people necessarily, but it just, it's just selfish. And, and it's, 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 I wish, you know, I just wish that in something like this, where it's a matter of life and death, that it really, uh, uh, the parents especially, would, would inculcate that into the minds and souls of their sons and daughters to make sure they understand that you know we're we're in a different reality now, and everybody's going to do its best to to sort of make sure that we protect and we we get along with one another. And it sounds like we need to uh, watch the movie and uh, capture some of the generosity that uh, Marco captured. Paula, let's go back to you in the movie. Um, it sounds like one of the other major storylines is this uh, relationship between daughter and uh, father, and that's also a storyline that we've heard you know 
in the Bible, the prodigal son, um, and uh, lots of uh, lots of stories about that. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, what you may have learned from that uh, storyline and that uh, that that character. Yeah, um, you know, I, I was very lucky to have both my nonnos, both my grandparents and my dad around growing up. So I had a lot of of that paternal influence in my life and. I uh, continue to look to them for advice into my 20s and now I'm in my early 30s and um, was very lucky to be very close to them. So, but what I can't deny is that there's always this, this point where, um, you know, you want to be more like them or with parents. I think sometimes they wish you were a little more like them in certain ways. I think we see that a lot with Laura and, and Marco in the film. Um, I was interested in playing a character that felt a little different than me in that she hadn't quite found her passion, you know, and I think she was really living in the shadow of her father who was so successful. So, um, you know, I, I, I was eager to kind of see her cracking open with him and actually, oh, you know, she also becomes awake through being in Achidenza and um, has this sort of new lease on life and this new passion the way her father does. So, um, yeah. I, What's I'm, her new I'm, passion? Her new passion is being a part of, you know, where she sees a business side in her and the film sort of ends with him, you know, dangling that they might need a boss for the vineyard. Um, and she previously was waiting tables and had dropped out of school and was feeling a little despondent about her place in the world. And um, I don't think that is necessarily exclusive to someone's age. I think that that, that we see people all the time, um, you know, um, have a change in career or find something else that that makes them tick and uh, I thought it was really sweet to see both her and her father do this at two very different stages in their in their respective lives so is there um, is there a lesson for uh, people in uh, in in your character um yeah find I mean, your passion yeah I th yes and I think also that I, I guess it's not Laura specific but that it's you're never it's you're never too old or or something to to find something that sparks you that you love. I think that that's really exciting. I think that that's something that like every character in the film, you know, we see that even with Enzo, played by Tony Napo, where he starts the film a certain way, and then by the end and through his relationship with Marco, we see him feel like he has a purpose again. So there's something magical about Achirenza as well. I like the idea that Laura and, you know, um, Wendy's character, Marina, that they enter this place and Marco and they, they're like, they leave better for it. You know, um, I think that's, that's very cool when, when being in such a small town um, really simplifies things for you, I, you know, in spending such a, a small amount of time in Achirenza myself, being around those people who are so generous and so pure there's just such a simple way of living there. Um, I found that there was like lessons that I would take away personally, you know, for many years moving forward. Paula, how do you become uh, both a star as well as a producer in a movie? How do you do that? Uh, yeah, I've been an actor since I was very young, since I was eight years old. Um, and I was always a very curious actor who loved knowing how the machine worked and loved, you know, um, loved crews really and getting to know what everyone's role was within that ecosystem. So about seven years ago, I opened up a production company and uh, started producing with fellow child actor, Michael Cedar, and got to work with Christina Jennings and Shaftesbury Films on my first several features. And uh, I'd been looking for a Italian Canadian co-production for some time, something that felt reflective of my experience growing up in Toronto and Sean Sisterna, our director, and I worked together on our first gig ever when I was eight, and I think he was probably 20. So we'd worked together for years and um, he brought me Ken's book and, you know, wanted to bring me on as an actor and, and it felt like the right, the right fit. Um, and you know, the, the, the thrill of producing is for me bringing, building out that team and that family and really getting to bring on crew that you that you admire and and also getting to uh, to bring them overseas for this kind of experience was was it's definitely stressful and and so thrilling and i really do love wearing being able to wear more than one hat was certainly a pleasure on this. tell us a little bit about your background you said you were uh in degrassi and slasher yeah um yeah degrassi is you know a canadian institution so to be able to be on something like that in your teen years is, is, it felt like a Canadian child actor rite of passage, but it also felt like an awesome responsibility. You know, the fan base is so avid and you're tackling such major issues. And we were all pretty much the age of our characters. I joined the show when I was 17, but I'd worked for years prior and never on something 
with that big a fan base. So you certainly feel that kind of responsibility. And I, I, it was, it was really a special show to be a part of and something like Netflix as slasher is like, you know, to be part of the Netflix family is so interesting because the access that, that a show like that has there's so many people all over the world watch it and respond to it. And I'd never been part of a genre show and it's an anthology show at that. So you, we play different characters every season and um, just having that, that communication and that feedback that from fans of, of the genre has, has been really exciting. So what's, um, what's I, next for you? I'm going into production on a feature based on a really great book called We're All in This Together. And we go to camera in 10 days. So we are one of the very first projects back out of COVID. And, you know, we take that super seriously. It's, it's, it, the pandemic has affected so many people, of course, the economy, so many jobs. So to your conversation about mask wearing, like we, we all have to do our part to be safe, to keep each other safe. And also so that we can keep each other employed and, um, so I'm really looking for, I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm really excited to get back to set and, you know, we want to keep everybody healthy. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Just before you leave, uh, remind us if uh, we're interested in, uh, in watching the film, how do we do that? Awesome. Thanks, Brian, for having us. Yeah, you can watch it on iTunes, on Apple TV, on Rogers On Demand, Bell, Cineplex, Kajeko, Eastlink. And it's called? From the Vine. Starring? Joe Pantoliano, Wendy Carson, Marco Leonardi, me, others who are awesome. <laughs> We're chatting with uh, Paula uh, Bracati uh, and Ken Cancellara about a movie called uh, uh, From the Vine and about a book called uh, Finding Marco. We're going to take a break and come back more with Ken. Uh, Paula has to leave us, but uh, come back more with Ken. And we're going to talk a little bit about the business side of things of the film. Stay with us. We're going to have a break and uh, be back in just a minute. Well, we're back uh, with Ken Cancellara on the Brian Crabby Radio Hour on Saga 960. And uh, Ken is the author of a book called Finding Marco and uh, the producer of a film uh, called From the Vine that is uh, number one this week on Apple uh, TV in Canada or iTunes in Canada. Um, and I'm going to have to watch it. I read the book and I uh, quite enjoyed it, uh, but I have not had the privilege yet of watching the film. Uh, Ken was kind enough to send me a trailer that I'm going to try to append to the end of this um, so that all of you can see it. But uh, um, Ken, this was, I understand, a Canadian-Italian production. Tell me from the business side, you know, how you do a Canadian-Italian production and get something actually filmed and produced and, and to the market. Yeah, it was quite a journey, uh, Brian, because um, we wanted to access, obviously, tax credits from, from both Canada and Italy. Uh, we knew that uh, the budget for the Italian production would be quite, quite high uh, for obvious reasons. We'd have to bring our own crew. We'd have to bring our actors over there. We'd have to mesh them with an Italian crew and Italian cast, and, 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 and that's expensive. And so uh, we thought about doing this as a, as a co-production, and it actually turned out quite well because not only did we uh, access tax credits both from Canada and from Italy, uh, but we were also uh, quite fortunate in uh, getting a sizable grant from the region of Basilicata, which is the Italian version of, a, of our province. So the province of Basilicata contributed substantially to the production of our movie there. Um, so that's the financial side, where, where, where basically you're, you're, uh, you're accessing or trying to access some funding from both governments. What makes it a, a co-production, an interesting uh, uh, co-production, is the, uh, again, the amalgamating of, of crews and, and cast. So we had our own crew here that Paula accessed. We had our own cast, Pantoliano, Cruz, and Brancati, and the rest of the, the, uh, the cast that, that Paula mentioned. But we also obviously needed an Italian cast and an Italian crew. And so we had to access through our uh, Italian producer, uh, Franco, uh, Francesco Papa, uh, we had to access basically a crew and a cast uh, from, uh, from Italy. And so we needed to have an Italian uh, uh, production company and an Italian producer. Um, and so we brought our own cast and crew, we brought our own equipment, but we found also cast and crew there with their own equipment there. We meshed them together and we created this uh, uh, this this incredible family. Now, Brian, what happens, of course, is it can either go terribly wrong or it can be, go terribly right. 
we were lucky. It could have gone terribly wrong because you've got English and you've got Italian and some people speak Italian, some people speak English and a lot of them didn't, didn't obviously speak both languages. Um, but the crew was amazing. They, they uh, 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 young people who really wanted to be with one another and really wanted to learn from the other. And so there was a seamless union of these, of these crews that was actually quite incredible to see. We had a film commission that came to, to watch our set practically every day, and they couldn't uh, say enough good things about the way this thing worked. They said that this was the best crew that they'd ever seen, that it meshed together seamlessly, and it was just a wonderful thing to witness. I'm making it sound like it was exciting and easy. Uh, it was exciting, but it was exciting because it was not easy. There were many times when, when frankly, I thought it would, it would derail. Um, expecting pieces of equipment from Matera that never came, from Rome that never came. So we had to do a lot of things with our, uh, with our uh, Italian producer to, to get this thing done. But it worked, and uh, thankfully it, it created for Paula and for, for Sean and from Pantoliano, who still talks about this incredible emotional journey that he himself has gone through, it created an experience of a lifetime. So uh, I'm absolutely delighted. This must have been uh, an incredible personal journey for you. Uh, you know, obviously a lot of the book is about your own personal journey, but then I understand that uh, some of the film was filmed in uh, Vaughn Town Hall, in your kitchen, in your <laughs> vineyard, uh, and even uh, some of it was filmed from the balcony of the house you grew up in. That's exactly right. The, uh, especially the kitchen, uh, my wife Anita will probably never Forgive me for this. If, when you see the movie, you'll see that Joe Pantoliano at the beginning, he's, uh, he's basically uh, uh, cooking a meal for, uh, for him and his wife so he could, he, could, he could tell her that he's going to Italy. And of course, he, um, he burns everything. The smoke starts, uh, starts moving on. And, and, it, and, and then there's a bit more smoke. And, and, and then there's, there's more smoke still. And the smoke was supposed to be aqueous. That is, not real smoke. You know, with a, with a fan that just blows some some smoke-like uh, uh, substance. Well, uh, the smoke that you see in the, in the movie is, is real smoke. The kitchen was actually burning down. The fire <laughs> alarm system was going. The fire trucks were on their way. We had neighbors outside you know, my house wondering what the heck was going on in the house. Um, so you talk about a personal experience. It started here, and then of course I went to Italy where not only did we film in the vineyard, in my vineyard, but we also filmed, of course, uh, right below the balcony of the house that I was born. Um, so it was, uh, it was an incredibly personal odyssey. It was like an adventure for me that, that, that allowed me to recapture a lot of my youth. And, uh, and, and for that, I'm grateful. As I said to my wife, I said, look, I don't care really. Actually, I do care, I lied told her, I don't care if we ever make any money. As far as I'm concerned, the movie's already a success because it's, it just filled me with, with an emotional joy that, that can't be duplicated. The fact that it's actually being uh, a successful movie is, uh, is just, it's just the cherry on the, on the tart. I understand your own personal story is that uh, when you immigrated to Canada, your mother and father actually immigrated uh, several years before you and your grandfather raised you in Italy in the hometown, is that correct? Yeah, my father immigrated uh, six years before my mother and I did. I came to Canada with my mom. I was a, a young lad. And that's why my grandfather is really the, the, both the silent and the active protagonist of the book and of the movie. Because he was, for my formative years, my putative father. I mean, at five, six years of age, I mean, that's where you really gain your DNA. And it was my grandfather who really was my father. I remember very little of my father from my youth because he left when I was about four and a half years old. Uh, and I didn't see him until, until four or five years later. But in, in the intervening four or five years, uh, my grandfather really took the place of my father. And uh, so it, everything I learned by way of, by way of uh, uh, important uh, uh, characteristics and ideals in life came from my grandfather in his own way. My grandfather was illiterate, but he had uh, the mind of a philosopher. He had a knack of, of taking 
the, sim the most difficult concept and reducing it in its simplest form. And that came out in the movie where he's trying to explain to me in my youth um, why um, it wasn't stealing when you borrow cherries from your neighbor only to have them borrow quietly figs from yours. So it, it, these simple concepts that, uh, uh, that are very profound actually all came uh, from, my, uh, from my grandfather. And I was uh, delighted to see that Sean, the director of the movie, um, took those concepts and, uh, and if anything, he actually made them better. He made them funnier, he made them emotional. And uh, he's grateful for that. How does the uh, son of someone who leaves uh, and comes to Canada six years prior to uh, uh, you joining him, uh, raised by an illiterate grandfather, um, country vineyard boy from Italy, come to Canada and, 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 and appear before the Supreme Court of Canada, become the executive chairman of one of Canada's largest law firms. What was your secret of success, Ken? Um, it's, it's really not much of a secret, it's just hard work. It's um, uh, my father, I, Brian, I'm not sure that I would have had the courage that my father had to leave his young lad behind, leave his uh, wife behind, and come to a country where he knew neither the language nor what was uh, waiting for him. Um, and I've always been eternally grateful for that, uh, that, that a man would, would leave the comfort of the place he was born in and come across the, the ocean to start a life uh, that he hoped would be a better life for himself and his family. And I guess, Part of that stuck to me, where you tend to work just a little bit harder than the guy next to you. And, um, and so I, I attribute everything to hard work. And things that I still believe in. After so There's many a lot years. more than that, uh, Ken. You're, you're unbelievably articulate. You're a very deep thinker. You're very smart. Where did all those come from? My grandfather. The philosopher, the illiterate, but... Uh, philosophical uh, grandfather. Tell me stories. In those days, there's no TV, there's no tablets, there's nothing. All there is, is a grandfather taking his grandson in an old farmhouse, lighting up a fire at night, and doing nothing but, um, but telling me stories. He'd, he'd, he'd make up stories. Uh, he'd take me everywhere. We'd travel together. Uh, and although I was five, maybe six at the time, uh, people used to say to him that um, they used to call me the little man. So you brought the little man with you. And, and that's all attributable to him. I had, um, I had no other point of reference except my grandfather. My mother was the disciplinarian. My grandmother was the world's best cook, as they always are. And my grandfather was my philosopher king. And he still is to this day. What happened to him? Well, he passed away. And again, uh, both- uh, In the vineyard? Did he ever leave the vineyard? Did he come visit you in Canada? No, he never did. He uh, had immigrated actually to New York um, and uh, stayed in New York for four years. And then thankfully, my grandmother said, I'm not joining you in New York. So if you want to stay married to me, you better come back home. Thank God for that. Because if, if, uh, if, he hadn't, if she hadn't done that, I might have been American. So your grandfather went to New York before your father was born? Be before my father, uh, my, before my father was born, or before, certainly before I was born, um, and before my father and my mother were married. My mother was a, was a young girl at the time. Okay, and then lived the rest of uh, his life on the vineyard? On the farm, the very farm that, uh, that we filmed the movie. Writing the book must have been incredibly therapeutic, was it? It, it was. Uh, as I said, uh, Brian, the, the, the book isn't totally uh, a factual a recount of my life. It's romanticized. So I didn't leave the company uh, uh, in which I was employed as a senior executive because of ethical issues. I, I came up with those as a justification in the storyline for me to leave and go back to 
to, um, to find my roots. Um, but the rest of it is, is quite true. Uh, I did go back to find my roots. I did hook up with my friends, uh, several of whom are, have uh, major cameos in the movie itself, which is another emotional thing for me, seeing my friends actually being immortalized in a motion picture. You talk about an emotional uh, high. Um, so, Do you appear on screen? Yeah, I have a little, people still kid me about that. The, the train conductor, the train conductor uh, is, uh, is I on the train telling Pantoliano to take his feet down because he, he, uh, he, uh, he, he was slouching on, on the chairs. And my, uh, I, I say four words, it takes 3.7 seconds for me to say them and I'm up for an Oscar. Awesome. Ken Kanzler, it's a real pleasure uh, chatting with you tonight about uh, both your book, Finding Marco, as well as uh, the movie, uh, which is called From the Vine. Uh, and uh, remind us, please, how we can access it. Um, all, the, all the digital platforms, iTunes, Apple, Kojeko, uh, et cetera. It, you, you, know, if you go to Facebook, you'll, you'll go to the website, From the Vine website, go on my website, uh, Kay Cancellara, uh, uh, at, 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 at gmail.com. Um, it, it's, it's widely uh, available in all of the digital platforms. We're soon, I should have mentioned one other thing, we're soon going to be distributing it in the U.S. through uh, Samuel Goldwyn uh, uh, Pictures, the same Goldwyn as in Goldwyn Mayer, the Metro Goldwyn Mayer family. So awesome. that'll, be, that'll be coming in the fall and it'll be distributed globally in Europe through Minerva uh, towards the uh, September, October of, of this year as well. So it's going to go global very shortly. What's next for King Cancellara? Well, I've just uh, finished writing uh, another novel um, that is, uh, is now uh, uh, with, the, uh, uh, with a publishing house, uh, an international publishing house. That, uh, uh, so hopefully that, uh, that new novel will, uh, uh, will be available uh, uh, everywhere. They're, they're going to be again uh, uh, releasing it internationally. It's called Redemption in the Mayela Mountains. So it's a, it's a, I've, I've had a lot of fun writing that book. So it, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it in print. Ken Kessler, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I have to tell everyone that I had the privilege of working with Ken um, for seven years and, uh, and off and on a few times uh, thereafter. Um, one of the smartest, nicest, most articulate uh, uh, people I've ever had the privilege of working with. Ken, it's an honor to, uh, to have you on my show and I look forward to watching the movie. Thank you so much. Brian, thank you for having me. You're very kind. Appreciate that. Well, that's our show for tonight on the Brian Crombie Radio Hour. We're talking with uh, Ken Cancellara about his movie uh, From the Vine. Uh, you should watch it on uh, Apple Films, iTunes, uh, or any of the other social media sites that Ken mentioned. Have a great evening, everybody. My name is Mark Gentile. I was born in Accelenza, Italy. What's this? I was standing there. I had this epiphany. Oh, my God. Yeah. Men and their epiphanies. Benvenuto in Italia. Arrivederci. Mrs. Gentile, I was just sorry to see that your husband closed your retirement account. I'm sorry, he did what? A Cerenza. Oh. It's not like he used to be, you know. I can't remember what he used to be. I haven't been back in 45 years. Questo pericolosissimo criminale americano. No, a canadese. Canadese, America, it's the same shit. <laughs> I vigneti sono rimasti abbandonati da tempo fa. La gioventù, eccellenza, non ci sta. The answer lies in service to something older than yourself. You are dreaming. Sometimes dreams come true. Hey, Marcello! Call him, call him. I don't know how to make wine! Does anybody know how to make wine here? Nessuno. 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 Okay, so we Google it. We Google it. Uh, Ma cerchiamo con Google, eh? This midlife crisis vacation is not fair to mom. <laughs> oh my God, you had sex in the wine. No, uh -huh, it's not wine yet. Fa che la vigna in onore di tuo nonno diventi il sogno di noi tutti. Not only for you, but for everybody. Thank you. I gotta do this. For the people, the town, 
maybe even me.